Hey, it's David Farmer, and today we're talking UTM codes. One of the most important things in digital marketing is the ability to be able to track the success of a digital marketing campaign. Now, whether that is a email campaign, a display banner campaign, video campaign, social media campaign, Anytime a customer is requested to click a link to be delivered to your dealership's website, you're going to want to have a UTM code there to be able to track the success. Now, if we go in and look at what a UTM code is, you're going to find out that it is a urchin tracking module, which is actually a company that Google purchased prior to uh, the release of Google Analytics. It allows, it really is part of the fundamental uh, mechanisms inside of Google Analytics to be able to track the success and analyze the data that is provided. So it works pretty simply. Every time a customer clicks on a link that's gonna be driven to your dealership website, we're gonna drive that customer to what is commonly known as a landing page. So that landing page URL is what is going to drop your customer onto a specific page on your dealership's website. Now, in order for Google Analytics to know what campaign a customer clicked on, we need to be able to include information in that URL so Google Analytics can pick that up. So for Google Analytics to work, there has to be the Google Analytics scripting on your dealership's website on every page on your site. And as soon as a browser reads the HTML code that generates that actual page, it's gonna run through and hit that uh, Google, Google Analytics scripting. One of the things that that Google Analytics scripting is gonna do is it's gonna look to the URL to find out what page is being loaded and then if there is any additional data in that URL that's gonna provide the information that Google Analytics can use, package up, and then send to Google Analytics which is gonna be available inside the reports. So what, can, what uh, parameters can we pass into a UTM code? Well, if you do a quick Google search for UTM code builder, it's gonna bring you to this page right here. And this is gonna let you know that there are five different elements that we can add into that landing page URL with that UTM code. Those elements are gonna include source, medium, name, term, and content. Now, three of these are going to be mandatory for the, uh, the UTM code to work properly, and that's going to be the medium, the source, and the campaign name. Now, first of all, we're going to have source, but actually, let's go to the second one first, which is going to be the medium. So this is going to be like that first element that's going to be used to present that link to a customer to click. So this is gonna be whether it is a cost per click or pay per click advertisement in Google search, whether it's gonna be organic uh, content, maybe a, 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 another search, uh, a search engine like Bing or Yahoo, or it might be uh, a display advertisement or a social media post. From there, to add in some additional information that's going to be reportable, is going to be the source. So where is that source uh, coming from? Is it going to be Google? Is it going to be Facebook? Is it going to be a newsletter uh, email type? And then finally, the campaign name. So you're going to be able to uh, 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 measure each individual campaign or each individual newsletter that you might send out or, or email or uh, social media campaign that you might be running. Each one of the campaign names can be different which will allow you to uh, see the effectiveness of individual campaigns versus all of the newsletters or all of the different emails. So as you think about this, keep in mind that um, the, the values that are in the source medium and name are going to be specific uh, and it is going to be um, uh, uh, aware of the uh, capitalization of that. So 
you want to make sure that you're consistent across all of your UTM codes. You don't want to have email with a capital and a lowercase because it is case sensitive and you'll have duplication in your uh, reporting if you're not careful. I would recommend keeping a master spreadsheet that all of your marketers have available and making sure that you're always using the exact same one so it flows nice and cleanly into your Google Analytics. Now, once you have the URL, the landing page, you've created your uh, UTM codes, you're going to use that URL. You want to copy it from there. And when you're building out your email uh, or any of your marketing, that is the new landing page that you're going to want to use. So all of those values are going to get passed into Google Analytics. Now, if I pop over to Google Analytics real quick and I go to campaigns and then go to all campaigns, it's going to pull up. Uh, all of the information uh, that is going to be uh, uh, inside of Google Analytics for all of your campaign sources. Let me go ahead and just reset this real quick here. So how this works uh, from a technical standpoint is if you have that Google scripting on your site, as soon as a customer lands on that site, and runs through that script, that script is going to start to record different things. It's going to start a session. It's going to recognize if you've been the, to that site previously, or it's going to recognize that as a new user. It's going to look at that UT or the uh, the top URL to see if there's any UTM codes that's going to be able to attach uh, to this. And then it's going to also start to track all the behavior that that user is going to do on that site. Uh, and then also it's going to track any conversions that you might have set up, uh, any uh, goals that you might have set up as far as maybe completing a, uh, a, a form lead, maybe uh, completing a purchase if you're selling anything specifically on the website. And you can see here that if I, if I come into all of my campaigns uh, and I go on to source, this is where you're going to be able to see what's going to be passed in that source portion of the UTM code. So you can see I got Google, Facebook, um, I have AutoTrader, I have Cars.com. Uh, Medium is going to include kind of that top level, CPC, social, email, display, referral. And then from these, I can actually uh, look at uh, the additional data and see how that flows from acquisition to behavior and to conversions. Uh, I can add uh, a secondary content such as um, adding the uh, campaign name which we can add there, and then it'll give me um, not only the medium, but also the additional campaign name, and I'll be able to see uh, all of those top-level metrics uh, broken down uh, through acquisition behavior and conversion. All right, so in this video, we covered UTM codes, kind of how they work, where they came from, but the most important thing is that all of the digital marketing that you're doing if you want to be able to track the success inside of Google Analytics, you're going to have to make sure that you have UTM codes. So if you're working with an agency, make sure that they're utilizing UTM codes. If you're doing all of your marketing in-house, make sure you have those UTM codes sent. If you're utilizing technologies like the Entice platform, we actually have data-driven programmatic UTM codes already built into uh, our solutions. So it's going to cleanly come over and go right into uh, Google Analytics. So um, all this information is as relevant today as it will be tomorrow. We're right now in the transition of going from the current model of analytics to Google Anal Analytics 4 with uh, the, the release in October of 2020. Uh, so this is going to be something that's going to carry over. So UTM codes are as important tomorrow as they are today. As always, we really appreciate your time in watching these videos. If you got some value out of them, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Again, you'll find this video as well as many others on entice.com.